Hey, well, uh, welcome everyone. I've already read the passage we're looking at today. It's Ephesians 6, 5 through 9, and hopefully uh, I've brought some clarity to the first century culture uh, regarding masters and slaves uh, uh, setting up our discussion today as we talk about the impact of our faith on the workplace. And I've invited uh, Dan Wolford to join me today as we continue our Who Do We Think We Are series. So welcome, Dan. Thank you. Uh, Dan and his wife, Kim are part of our monthly advisory council. Dan is also uh, part of our quarterly uh, financial advisory council. Dan, how long have you guys been at BCDC? Uh, we started attending at the middle school in early 04, so ah, okay. 17, 17 years ago. 17 years, okay. You must have been four when yeah, you started? exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. Middle hey. schooler, actually. <laughs> okay. Hey, so let me start. We're talking about work uh, just by asking, Dan, what do you do for work? Well, I'm a financial advisor and have... Uh, have a firm in, based in Westerville um, and been doing it for 24 years. Okay. And so are you the owner or part owner? or? Uh, we're the primary owners um, and uh, we have a staff of eight. Okay. The name of the company is Swisher Financial Concepts. Okay. Okay. You can see their information at the bottom of the screen. No, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, we're talking about work. So could you share a bit... Um, I think our upbringing, when we when we talk about work and just our our, you know, our attitude towards work, maybe talk a little bit about your formative years, like what kind of work ethic uh, was instilled in you as a as a young guy. Well, I I I grew up with a a father who was who work was very you know very important to him and in our family. Um, he was uh, experienced in working as many as three jobs at a time to support us as a family so wow. my mom could stay home and yeah. and um, so I I received a lot of uh, encouragement shall I say and in, in terms of work ethic and that was, sort of meant everything working hard being able to support a family um, and then as a teenager I went to work on a dairy farm okay and uh, so it was kind of like out of the sk- skillet into the frying pan where um, then you really realized what work ethic was about working yeah. around the clock with livestock. Um, so I was, uh, was well trained in, in the work ethic side of things. Mm-hmm. And, uh, my dad would often say as a kid, yeah, he would flip on the lights at six in the morning on a Saturday morning as a youngster and let's go, there's work to do. Ah. And, uh, I would be, uh, you know, working for him or with him. Yeah. and my brother and then it was kind of a, a mentality of when the work is done you can go and do you know whatever else might be on your schedule yeah. but he always would follow up if i said i want to do something with friends or whatever is your work done wow and, uh, wow so that that did uh provide yeah. most of the foundation of where yeah. i went yeah. from there so work was important really very important, important. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And he wasn't he wasn't abusive about it. It yeah, was yeah. just important that you be able to support yourself and not go yeah. to debt and yeah. all this kind of stuff. Yeah. So I I perceive it as a as a positive. Yeah, yeah. But I think as we'll get into, I think the Lord was leading me through a lot yeah. of those years there. So. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. So we're you know I'm thinking is uh, you know we're talking we'll be talking a lot today about being followers of Jesus and how that relates you know to our jobs. I think of you know this series that we're in that the first three chapters are identity and the next three are more the purpose and and so like why would this you know what, what we're doing today why would this be an important conversation as christians to talk about our attitude towards work yeah well i i believe that uh, you know that we're all called to be a witness in everything that we do obviously um and well, you find if, if, if you're, whether you're employed or a homemaker or, or whatever, um, your work tends to provide the most interaction with other people. Yeah, yeah. So if you're going to spend that many hours away uh, um, or around other people, you ought to be witnessing when you're, when you're in the workplace. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I think for most people uh, watching today, uh, for at least a ser- serious chunk of their lives, work will take up a big, right. yeah. a big part of that. Exactly. Um, in this, in the passage we're looking at, verses five to eight, Paul, you know, he's speaking to 
to employees. You know, he uses the word slaves and, and, and he uses phrases like obey your masters just as you would uh, Jesus. Obey them not only when their eye is on you to win their favor. And, and I think that implies we're to work hard, uh, work to please them, even if they're not there or not watching. So let me ask you, you know, getting more specific about like work, how does how does your faith impact the way that you work? Well, I think that um, there's a there's a work ethic and a <laughs> diligence that that is required to to be providing a true image of Christ. I yeah. think um, if you just think about all of the things that you do in a in a given day in the workplace, and you try to capture those moments, was I bearing the image of Christ or not? And we're all sinners and guilty of many, you know, many points in the day. Yeah. I hear a lot of that of you around here, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, but I think that, uh, the more times we can capture those moments and, and just kind of reflect back, was I, was I providing a reflection of Christ or not in that, in that situation, the better, uh, trained you can become in, in living out your faith in the workplace daily. Yeah. Um, to the point of, you know, slaves, masters, whatever. Um, I think in the end of the passage, we'll get, we'll yeah. talk some about that, but, the, you know, Paul reminds us that we're all serving one master only. Yeah. yeah. And so as an employer, and I've been an employee and I've been an employer, but I constantly try to approach my work and whether it's managing people, managing clients, managing money yeah. <clears throat> in a yeah. sense that, I'm answering to, to Jesus, not the client yeah. or the employee yeah. Yeah. or whatever, so, or the government, the yeah. regulators. So this might be a bit of a, a curveball, but can you think of an example where, you know, you're in, you're at work and you're, you're functioning in your job where you were aware of your witness, aware that as a Christian, you're on display in the workplace where that impacted a decision you made. And I, I know I'm throwing you a, we didn't talk a lot about this, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, there have been, you know, many times. Um, I remember one time uh, an employee and I um, got into sort of a heated disagreement about a certain way we were gonna treat a, you know, a client situation. Uh, we didn't see totally eye to eye. And I let, as the, as the employer, I let the situation get escalated too far. He's a Christian, I'm a Christian. We both said some things loudly in the midst of other employees. Okay. okay. And I wrestled with that all evening that night. And the next day, just called the whole group together and, and apologized for the situation. Um, I didn't apologize for taking the stance I did because I still felt ethically I was right. But yeah. um, I apologized for my behavior, my yeah. non-Christ-like uh, behavior in front yeah. of the whole group the day before. And I think it, you know, it, it certainly helped that employee yeah. Yeah. in my relationship as well. Um, and I had other employees come to me later and 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 just express respect for the fact that I would, you know, humble myself, I guess, in a sense of, yeah. it wasn't that the situation was incorrect, we should have been doing it behind closed doors and that kind of thing. And yeah. when you can capture those kind of moments, and I I learned more than anyone in the room from yeah, it, yeah. obviously, but um, I know now looking back and hearing what they said to me afterwards, some of the employees that, you know, it's, it's, it's why we have what I consider to be a, you know, great, you know, great environment to, to work in. Um, yeah. So now, but when you say that, it's not that everyone who works at your company would be a Christian. That's correct. So I, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say everyone is It's certainly not a requirement. I am able to make it known through the fact that, uh, Kim and I will pray, um, about any potential new hire. Um, we talk about it. We we pray. Uh, we try to you know listen for the Lord to give us confirmation. Uh, she's she's 
very gracious to me in allowing me oftentimes to, you know, go off the deep end with, but, um, I really, had, um, appreciate her yeah. wise counsel. Yeah. And we know that most everyone that we've ever hired has been, uh, confirmed in one way or another by the Lord. Now our hearing and vision isn't hundred yeah, 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 percent. Yeah. So sometimes we will think we heard something, but it didn't. Um, but when we are able then to go to the employee making the offer or whatever and say, we've prayed about this and we think the Lord's saying that we should bring you on staff. It doesn't have, it doesn't mean that they have to be a Christian. They know that we are though. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. For whatever that's worth. Yeah. I, so I'm curious then, <clears throat> you know, so you're, 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 you have a secular career. I mean, I work at a church, I, you know, and, and, uh, so, so I'm just listening to you. I'm thinking, well, to say that to someone that you're hiring, Hey, we prayed about you. Mm-hmm. Have you, has that ever stirred a conversation? Like for someone to ask you, really, you you prayed about hiring me? Like, has that ever stirred, given you an yeah. opportunity then to maybe to point someone to Jesus or yeah, I mean, it, I wouldn't say that there's been a lot of immediate conversations. There's, there's been a lot of folks that's like, um, we may have already had enough discussions for them to say, yeah, I've been praying about it too, you know, uh, and I feel like this is something we should do. One of one of our guys, in fact, uh, shared with me a verse that came up on his Bible reading plan uh, when he was accepting the job. He's like, I think I've received word that I should do this. And he was leaving a completely different career. And that was really cool. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But what it does is it kind of sets the tone and, and that their, their, their ears, those that don't know the Lord as well are, I think, start to tune in to, you know, there's something different about how this place operates. I feel like, yeah, I feel like God's presence is there every day. And they often start to ask those questions like, well, you know, why is, why, why do I like coming to work or, you yeah, know, I mean, yeah. not every day is great, obviously. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> I don't want to make it sound like we, it's Disneyland. We have lots of, <laughs> we have lots of dysfunction and problems, but yeah, um, we try very hard to, you know, approach it yeah. with that image reflection of Jesus. So you're, so you're talking then, you know, as a Christian in the workplace, being aware that you're on display, being aware that mm-hmm. people are watching you, like, I, I'm trying to imagine now if I'm watching this thinking, okay, but I don't have a boss as cool as you. No. What if like, you know, so, so like, what if, what if, uh, my boss acts in such a way that he or she is not deserving of my respect? What if my boss, you know, what if I work in a dysfunctional place? What if, I mean, yeah. I, I remember places I used to work where the norm, the culture was to bad mouth the supervisor, bad mouth, the owner, bad, like, and so how do I, how do I be a light? Yeah. Like without being a jerk, let's just put, you know, right. as a Christian, how do I, how do I live my faith in that, in that environment? Yeah. I, and, and that, I think a lot of folks find themselves in that sort of scenario. That's where I spent the first six years of my career in that type of a scenario. Um, and I remember thinking, um, that you know these these guys are going to get what's coming to them someday but you know um and not being real thrilled about uh going to work um but i think if if everyone has relationships and situations that they that they can speak into um whether you're you know an employee that is as part of a department that you know or uh, at the board, you know, at the board uh, room table, conference room, um, then, you know, you always have those chances of speaking truth and yeah. and, and light into situations. Yeah. yeah. And remembering that um, that particular temporary situation that you're in, that employer is not your master. It's yeah. You know, it's it's ultimately Jesus. And they too are being pursued by Jesus. So you have to, um, you know, you know, in a way, I think, um, approach it from the standpoint of what what Jesus would want me to say into these situations. Yeah. And, yeah. and ultimately, I think Jesus sometimes, as He did with me, pluck 
pluck you out of the situation, put you in a better, yeah. you know, more purpose driven uh, situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or you might see hearts, you know, changing from, from yeah. just your own uh, input. So you said something that really is, is comes out of the passage that, you know, Paul talking to the slaves, he calls them slaves of Christ. You mm-hmm. just said, you know, your, your boss is not, does not own you. That's right. um, <clears throat> doing the will of God from your heart. And then it says this, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, I, I think back to working in cultures, in, in um, environments uh, that were quite negative. I know as a Christian, I used to, and I don't know where this came from. I used to have a weird sense of I was somehow responsible for the group. And I don't know if this makes sense, but I felt like it was my responsibility to clean it up. Yeah. And I think looking back that, no, I, I, I think my responsibility was to be, was to just, you know, be that presence of Jesus or to be that light. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that makes sense, but do you want to say anything towards that? Like just the freedom to be in a dysfunctional workplace and still do it as unto Jesus. Right. Because I think that's freeing for me that like right. Jesus is responsible right. for the group. I'm not responsible for the group. Does that make sense? Oh, for sure. <clears throat> I mean, the example that I'm talking about were my six, first six years of my career were in, like I say, a lot of profan- <laughs> profanity and yeah. some loud voices and people feeling like, you know, nothing was going to be good enough for the boss and that kind of thing. Um, but being one of the folks there that didn't use profanity and was expressing as much kindness as possible to people, whether they were on my rear end or not, you know, throughout and being a calming voice at the table and that kind of thing. Yeah. I think, um, I think Jesus worked through that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Most of the people I worked with those days are clients of mine today because of the respect, I think, that was developed yeah, in those years. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so to that point, it was kind of like just kind of maintaining the the posture of yeah. I'm not going to get sucked into yeah. using foul language all the time and, you know, beating down people. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure I did that from time yeah. to time and I still do. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, you know, more times than not, I, yeah. I was probably more of the, you know, the calming voice. Yeah, and yeah. People, so. very cool. And so uh, before we move on to, well, a couple more here. Can you, <clears throat> uh, have you ever observed where someone's attitude, like as a, as a follower of Jesus, for my attitude towards work or my work ethic, if it's if it's a more negative one, mm-hmm. have like, uh, have you ever seen that be a negative impact on someone's ability to share their faith? Okay. Um, Does that make sense? So if I, if I'm lazy at work or if I, I'm the complainer mm-hmm. <coughs> or I'm the gossiper, like, I mean, and then, and then to turn around and say, Oh, well, yeah, I'm a Christian. <laughs> Have you ever seen where that's, right. that's like, Whoa, that's actually had negative impact. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of the, the, age old, you know, issue, I think, with the Christians that, you know, speak uh, that they're Christian versus, you know, in action, you yeah. know, putting it in action. Um, I would obviously, I think I would much prefer to be known as walking out my faith and just walking around talking about talking yeah, about yeah, it all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I think we have to be very cautious of uh, of just making sure that our actions and, and what we are doing at, at work or as an employer or whatever are speaking more volumes yeah. than what's just yeah. spewing out of our mouth. Yeah, yeah. I, it reminds me of an old country song that uh, comes to mind. The lyric was, I would rather see see a sermon than hear one any day. And I think, I think, I think just an awareness that the plan of God is to put us on display Mm -hmm. in the workplace as Christians to lift us up. I think that that's a sobering and helpful reminder. Um, I'm going to jump to verse nine, verse nine, Paul switches gears and he focuses more on now talking to masters or employers. 
and he and he says to them basically, you know, be uh, uh, to be kind in the way they treat their employees. And he says this: since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him, I'm just curious, as an employer, what what does that what does that say to you as an employer when you hear that? Well, I, I think it speaks to the servant leadership, humility that you know Christian employers need to strive toward you know it's very i think it's sometimes very difficult in in situations where um employers can become you know egotistical and and just sort of holier than thou in a way whether it's uh by position or you know their faith or whatever um but you know clearly god doesn't play favorites it's you know there's gifts that are that are uh dispersed among people if you can find your purpose then you're really walking in what god you yeah. know has for you yeah i mean he he may have handed me um the gift of financial management he handed you good looks i mean you know we'll make sure to keep we, that <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. but but i think um at the end of the day it's follow, you know, follow him, yeah. <laughs> serve him, and be humble about it. And if it's if it's in a situation where you're also leading other coworkers or employees, um, then also do that humbly and faithfully. Yeah. If you're in a position or purpose of following leadership, follow leadership but know who your master is. Yeah. And then, you know, um, the, the purposes will, will be delivered. I'm curious, you know, if, if I'm a boss and I am a boss now that mm-hmm. I think about it, <laughs> but, but I think one of the challenges sometimes is because you get focused on the job, on the task that you forget that, that your employees are people. Mm-hmm. They're just not, and this will sound, sort of crass, but they're not just tools to fulfill that task. Like, do you feel like your faith impacts the way you see your employees and maybe give an example? Of, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I totally see our employees as just co-workers. Um, we're, we're there to, to deliver, you know, relationships and, and products to, to clients uh, who are counting on us. Um, but I think what you know, what Kim and I try to focus most on is being servant leaders to anyone who yeah. works for our company. You know, just just because we sign paychecks or whatever has nothing to do <laughs> with you know our faith and authority in the kingdom. It's um, it's we're we're the we're the lowest servants of all, trying to make it wow. yeah. so that our team can actually deliver, you know, the product. I mean, I have a certain role in the company, yeah, but yeah. if everybody's given the equipment, uh, you know, it's like the equip classes we do here and everything, you, we try to equip our team um, to deliver and, yeah. and equipping. It's like what you guys do and teaching. Yeah. You've got to, you know, be humble enough to, to yeah. let that go. Yeah. Yeah. And teach that out. Yeah. So. It sounds uh, sounds like Jesus. <laughs> Seriously, like just that that well, that uh, that he came to serve and not be served. Right. And I think that's, you know, is that even possible to do that in the workplace? Obviously, you need to get the job done, and a person needs right. to do their job, etc. But it sounds like that's a that's a chunk of the thought process when you're dealing with your employees. And I think there are many businesses out there that do it that yeah. do it that yeah. way. And I wholeheartedly believe that's yeah. available in the workplace. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I fall short every morning. I open my eyes way <laughs> short. I don't want to, you know, give that impression, but, um, yeah, but I think just the trying to, to be the servant leader yeah. that Jesus called us to be is, it was what we need to do. He does all the rest. Yeah, yeah. So. Well said. So, uh, Dan, we're gonna we're gonna wind down our our conversation, and and I guess uh, I just want to leave this last section just to say: Is there anything like any final thoughts? Anything you want to say or re say? I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, in 
in thinking about the passage when you said we were going to talk about this. Um, you know, I think that um, it's very strange language to look at from master, you know, master slave type of thing. Yeah, I just kind of encourage people to read that as inserting the word coworker all throughout or, or, you know, employer, employee, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, because truly, if you can approach work from a, from a humble standpoint, as whether you're employed or you're the employer focusing on the fact that Jesus is still on the throne at the end of the day for yeah. everybody involved and is pursuing everybody involved, it helps. Well said, well said. Well, Hey, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, you, um, thanks for sharing your wisdom. And so uh, now back to you, Michael.